Despite some good news from the stock market, the U.S. economy, the world economy, is suffering badly. Here are the American numbers. The jobless rate stands at 6.7 percent. Almost 550,000 jobs were lost just last month. Uh, employment numbers are being tossed around these days, but are they really an accurate rate, way to measure the health of the world's largest economy? How about these stimulus plans? Are they going to work? Let's get some analysis. Uh, we're joined by economist Peter Schiff. He's predicted much of today's economic woes. Peter Schiff, thanks for being with us. You look at the markets and they seem to be cheering the Obama stimulus plan. Very Keynesian, very lots of bridges, roads, spend a lot of federal money in order to try to stimulate the economy that way. Is that going to work? No, it, it can't work. You know, unfortunately, President-elect Obama doesn't understand the problems. He's being very poorly advised, and his solutions are going to make, make the situation worse. You know, you, you know, even unemployment, you mentioned, is I think the unemployment problem is already greater than they realize. I think there's a lot of people who have left the workforce. They're discouraged. They're not being counted. There's a lot of people who are working part-time that would rather be working full-time. I think there's a lot of independent contractors and a lot of commission salespeople who are still employed, but they're barely making any money. But unfortunately, what Obama is planning to do is not going to help the situation. He's going to put more people to work in the, in the, private, in the public sector, but at the, the expense of destroying even more jobs in, 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 in How, the private sector. Well, why would that happen? I mean, you have contractors, you have companies that assist public works initiatives that would help yes, create you know, private but, sector jobs. No, no, but what happens is money is being redirected. I mean, sure, uh, it, it, it's going to be good to have better bridges and better roads, and they're certainly in disrepair. But the fact of making these repairs doesn't improve the economy. I mean, what improves the economy is the fact that we have better roads and better bridges. But unfortunately, it takes resources to get them there. And in order to do that, in order to bear that cost, we have to divert resources from other parts of the economy. You know, and, and so this, this is not, we're not going to be able to spend ourselves into prosperity. Well, I, I'm having trouble understanding why it would be an issue to stop the hemorrhaging. You lose half a million jobs in one month if the government spends money to repair bridges that need repairing. But the this government isn't just doesn't. An empty, this isn't just an empty yes, uh, spending but initiative. The government doesn't have a pot of money that it can draw from. The government has to take the money from the private sector. Either it does it through taxes or it does it through inflation by just creating money or it borrows it, but of course if it borrows it, that's money that a private entrepreneur can't borrow. So what we get is government jobs instead of private sector jobs. Government jobs tend to be a lot less efficient. So we're going to spend a lot more money creating the jobs, but we're not going to improve our standard right. of living or our economy as much as a result. I suppose the idea is that this will stimulate the economy and will trickle to other areas. But no, no, what no, would it's you not going to stimulate anything. It's going, to, it's going to hurt the economy, and it's going to interfere with the free market and the way it's trying to rebalance our economy. So what would the solution be according to you? Just let companies that are in trouble fail? In other Absolutely. words, allow the capitalistic system. But you're talking, look at the auto industry. You're looking at millions of people who depend on that industry. Well, so you doing know, that would but, be a catastrophe. But just turning it over to government control is not going to make their job safer. What we need is a vibrant, competitive automobile industry, and we're not going to get one if we support uh, the status quo. We need to let the market work. We need to let the companies go through bankruptcy. We need to let management be changed. Look, I think if, we, if the government does nothing, you know, five years from now, we'll have many more people employed making cars in this country than we do today. The auto industry isn't going to go away. Right. Uh, if we're going to have a, a, a real industry, oh, well, we need in to have many a profitable industry. I'm sorry to jump in, Peter. In many countries, when auto indus the auto industry wasn't able adapt to, uh, to adapt to demand, they completely disappeared. I'm thinking about the United Kingdom, for example. You can have a worldwide economy without GM, but the problem is that in the short no, no, term... I, I yeah, in the short term, you'll have two or three million people affected by the failing of that company and an economy that sinks into deep depression. You don't agree right, with that? Right, but, but you don't want to make the false conclusion that just if we support these jobs that the, the economy is going to prosper. You're going to destroy other jobs that you can't measure. Uh -huh. And in the long run, the cost of bailing out companies like General Motors it is worse than the cost of letting them fail. It's always better to let the market function. But Remember, what if, if the market had functioned, we wouldn't be in this mess. What if you Good. attach conditions to the bailout and you say, no. look, I'm bailing you out, but you better come out with a line of cars that's energy no, but, efficient. But the government can't do that. You think that bureaucrats in Washington know what kind of cars the public wants to buy? I mean, socialism doesn't work. Central government planning doesn't work. These things have to be determined in the market. It's the free market. It's private capital seeking a profit, taking a risk. That has to determine what gets produced and how it gets produced. And, you know, you can't turn these market-related functions over to central government planning. But even the market is saying 
This sounds like a good idea. Look at the Dow Jones. No, the, the market doesn't know anything. Look the, look, the market loved it in the 1990s when all these dot-coms were coming public. Just because the market is going up today, it means nothing. These are just traders. This is money sloshing around. In the long run, the market is going to suffer, particularly in the United States, and our economy is going to be weakened dramatically as we move more and more away from free markets and capitalism towards socialism, towards centrally planned economy. This is what is at the root of our problems. Our economy is in trouble today because we veered away from the free market. We had the government setting interest rates too low. We mm -hmm. had the government creating moral hazards in the free market. We had the government distorting the economy, blowing up these asset bubbles. We are now suffering the, the, the consequences of too much government. The last thing we want to do is add insult to injury, well, bring on even more Peter, government now. We can't Peter, survive it. We've got, to look, we've got to wrap it up, but quickly, some would say the banking industry kind of ruined things by not having enough control over it, not no, no, too much control. Not, not at all. Look, the banking industry is, is, is heavily regulated. The brokerage industry, of which I'm a part, is heavily regulated. We've got tons of regulation. The regulations are the problem. If the government stayed out of the market, the free market would provide regulation. Instead, the government interferes and removes the natural regulatory process that exists in a free market. They distort the markets. They create the malinvestments. They create the bubbles. Now they're bursting. We have to deal with the consequences. But if the government tries to interfere some more, they're going to recreate the Great Depression, only it's going to be an inflationary depression this time. It's going to be a lot worse. All right, Peter Schiff, economist, joining us live. Thanks very much for your thoughts uh, Thank you. On, on all of these uh, economic packages and the developments over the last few days. Thank you for that. We're going to take a short break. Authorities and